Hi, welcome to part two of our show on how to build a lathe out of bicycle parts and other junk. Last week in part one, I showed you how to make the headstock and the ways, and how to make adapters for the chuck and pulley. This week, I'll add a tailstock with a couple of accessories, and a woodworking tool rest, which will make the handy lathe ready for woodworking and hand metal turning. We'll start with the tool rest. Last week, I showed you a very simple tool rest I used to turn the pulley adapter. That kind of rest only takes a couple minutes to make out of scraps. Unfortunately, they aren't adjustable, and if you make them too long, they get really flexy. For all around turning, you need a tool rest assembly like this. You'll notice it looks slightly different than the one on my lathe. After I built it, I made some improvements in the design. The construction, however, is the same. A lot of this part is going to be animated because some of my video of the actual construction didn't come out. First, I made the bracket assembly, which is made out of dimensional lumber. You can cut it out of a 4x4 or glue up two pieces of 2x4. Then I cut and deburred a piece of 3 quarter inch water pipe to hold the actual tool rest and added a beefy set screw. If you want, you can make the set screw a wing screw like I showed you in the pipe grinder video. Now for the tool rest itself. I made that out of two more pieces of pipe. The horizontal piece is a segment of a piece of pipe which I cut with a hacksaw. The vertical piece is a section of half inch pipe. Because half inch pipe doesn't quite fit in the socket I made, I had to turn it down in the lathe. To do this, I made yet another temporary tool rest and held it in the chuck. This piece is a little longer than you usually want to be turning in a chuck, but if you take a very light cut, you can probably get it okay. Unlike me, you probably want to do this before you put the horizontal piece on. Next, you need to cope the vertical piece with an angle grinder and files so it fits securely against the horizontal piece. Then drill and tap a hole for a small bolt. The bolt isn't going to be strong enough to hold things together on its own, but it will keep everything aligned while you weld or braze. Fillet brazing would probably have been my first choice for joining these pieces, and any kind of arc welding, MIG or, or ordinary arc welding would be fine too. Unfortunately, my ex-girlfriend got all my welding gear in the breakup, so I had to come up with a slightly more innovative fix. And what I ended up doing was basically burying the whole piece in my mold, and then filling it with molten pot metal. After I ground off the parts that squeezed out, it looked okay and it seems pretty sturdy. Sort of a crude hack, but it's working so far. And then the last thing I did with the tool rest was take a fine grain file and smooth out the top, and that'll make your tools slide along at nice when you're turning. To lock the tool rest assembly down on the ways, I used a bicycle hub quick release. If you've ever tried to cut or thread one of these, you know it's basically impossible because the alloy is really hard. So since I had to use the whole thing, I had to make a little spacer. To do that, I used a cut off piece of PVC coupling and a PVC plug, and that gave me the right distance. The last major assembly I'll show you how to build this season is the tailstock, and that's going to be another big wood glue up. Now, because the tailstock actually has to slide on the ways, you want a fairly hard wood on the part that makes contact. I used a piece of rock maple for the bottom part of the glue up. Now, I wouldn't want you to think I actually went out and bought a piece of expensive hardwood. I took this out of an old coffee table I found in an alley. So to make the glue up, I started with two rectangular pieces, each with a strip of rock hard maple near the bottom. Then I drilled two holes in each piece going through the maple. Then I cut out the bottom so I had half of each hole left. Next, I cut the profile of each piece using my table saw and the refurbished band saw I showed you a couple episodes ago. Then I cut one of the pieces laterally and glued the three resulting pieces together like this. The next step was to put the blank tailstock on the ways and see if it sits square. It probably won't. To correct it, you can put PSA sandpaper on the ways and slowly grind the tailstock over it until it fits right. To see the high spots, you scribble on the base of the tailstock with a pencil, and that way you can see where they rub off. This is a pretty slow step, but I don't think you want to rush it too much. The tailstock is held down by a strip of iron with another quick release. This one came from the seat post. Now's the part where I got to bore with my lathe for the first time. I put a spade bit in the chuck that was a little smaller than the diameter of the headstock ram. Then I locked the tailstock down so it would just slide without slop, and slowly pushed it into the spinning bit. To enlarge the hole, I built a crude but effective boring bar. All it is is a piece of EMT conduit with a screw in it. I put it in the chuck and ran it back and forth through the hole for several passes, moving the screw a little bit each time, until the hole was exactly the right size for the tailstock ram. The tailstock ram itself is made of yet another piece of steel pipe. 
It gets a feather made of kiwi stock to keep it from turning in the hole. I held that feather on with two blind rivets made from ten penny nails. It also gets two half inch nuts, one on each end. You can actually hammer these in or press with an arbor press and they'll stay. However, I did put another blind rivet in each one just to be sure. The tailstock ram feed screw is a piece of half inch all thread rod with several nuts and washers. It fits through a round wooden plug that you can turn in the lathe chuck. I actually cheated a little. My other lathe happened to be set up with a faceplate on it, so I just used that. But if you were going to turn it on the handy lathe, the easiest way is probably to drill the center hole and then press in a half inch dowel and then you can hold that in the chuck. It gives you a nice handle. Line up all the holes and install the plug with a couple of gold screws, but don't use any glue because you need to be able to take this part apart for maintenance. The last step in the tailstock is to turn a nice knob for the end of the feed screw. Or maybe you could do a crank handle of some sort. At this point the lathe itself is complete. I do want to show you how to build a couple of simple accessories that you're going to need right away. First, you'll definitely need a dead center for your tailstock. These are just half inch bolts with a nut on them with the thread cut off. Clamp the nut part in your chuck and turn it to a cone shape on the end. These are so easy to make, you might want to make a couple spares. A tailstock chuck is used to hold drill bits and other tools for boring. If you can find a chuck with half inch threads on it, which are pretty common, then it's really easy to make an adapter out of another half inch bolt. And finally, if you do any spindle turning, you're going to want a drive center. I started with a piece of large bolt and drilled and tap a hole in the head to screw it onto the end of my bicycle spindle. Then I carved four spurs in it with my angle grinder and files. Good spur centers are actually a pain to make by hand. So if you can, I would find another one from another lathe and just modify it to fit this. The center pin, which must extend further than the drive spurs to work, was a separate piece of steel that I turned and then pressed into the hole. I tried making these in one piece with hand tools, and I find it's really hard to get in there and shape the center pin without wiping out the spurs. And that's it! The Handy Lathe Mark 1 is done. And that means that next episode I'll be able to start showing you some common tools and techniques for wood turning. I'll see you then!